Because my mom was one of those, like, is one of those serial phone talking people, where as soon as she pushes the hang up button, which I realized when I was thinking about this story, I haven't used one of those hang up buttons in years now. I don't have one of those landlines anymore. She would push the hang up button and immediately dial the next number. And then she would often do this. I remember this as a kid growing up. And I was back in Dallas last weekend and the weekend before because I was doing storytelling in Dallas. And I was staying with my folks both those weekends. So I got to witness this once more. My mom, she goes into her bedroom, doors open. She lies down on her bed and she pulls out the phone. She talks to one friend, tells them the story about something that just happened. Hangs up, talks to the next friend. And what I would notice was this. She would usually, she, she has a slightly negative bent to her perspective. She likes to tell stories about things that she's complaining about or things that went wrong. And you know, a lot of humans are like that. You know, the drama in life. She really like gravitated towards that. And so she would call up a friend and she would tell them this dr drama story of something that went wrong at school because she's a preschool teacher or this or that. And then she would hang up and tell the exact same story to the next friend and then to the next friend and then to the next friend. And that was all well and fine, but what killed me as a child was that I would hear the story begin to change, telling by telling by telling, and certain things would drop out, and certain things would get exaggerated and twisted, and, and I was there for many of these stories when they happened, and I knew it didn't happen the way she was saying it on the fourth telling, on the sixth telling, and you know, kids are very literal, and I couldn't understand why my mom was telling these lies. And it just annoyed the hell at me and my brothers. We were always, you know, there's always something that just pushes your buttons. And with my mom, this was one of those things. Just like, oh my God, just tell it like it is. We know what happened. We were there. And, uh, but this just kept on going. And in fact, I got to witness this two weekends ago when I was back in Dallas staying with my family. So I was there for Rosh Hashanah. And, uh, and Rosh Hashanah was on, uh, started on a Wednesday night, Thursday night, we went out two nights of Rosh Hashanah. Traditionally, you go out and you have a Rosh Hashanah meal with your family friends or family or what have you. Rosh Hashanah is the Jewish New Year, so it's a celebratory time, you have a nice meal. And uh, we go to some family friend's house. My one brother was in town, and I was in town, both my parents, we go to these friends' house, and we're having dinner. And in the middle of dinner, we suddenly hear thunder, and all of us get very excited, because me and my brother particularly, we love storms. But in general, you know, Texas and a lot of places are having terrible droughts, so the opportunity for rain was such a blessing. And so we're all excited, we see the lightning flashing in the distance, we're like, woo, -hoo! we're checking outside, we're checking outside, and the lightning's getting louder, or the thunder's getting louder and louder, the lightning's getting brighter, and then it passes, and not a drop of rain, and everyone's kind of bummed. Yeah. Um, and so we get in the car afterwards, and this was, you know, we were there for like five or six hours, going until like 11 or so. We get back in the car, we drive home, and the closer we get to the house, we realize that the storm hit right around the house. A lot of rain everywhere, and, and we pull up to the house, and my dad has planted over the 20 almost years that we've lived in that house, my family's lived in the house, planted a veritable forest in the front of the house. But behind the house, in between my parents' yard and the neighbor's yard, there's this old sycamore tree growing there. And it kind of shaded over, and they're part of this like homeowners association thing, so it was technically belonged to the homeowners association where this tree was. And we're pulling up to the house, and my dad looks behind the house, and he says, something's not right. And we get a little closer to the house, and he's like, the tree's gone. And that's that, oh shit moment. It's like, oh no, what's gonna happen? And uh, so sure enough, everyone like runs to the back doors, glass doors, looking into the backyard, and it's just tree. The entire backyard is filled with tree. It's like we're in like, like an Ewok village or something, up in the trees. And, and it was like, oh man, this, it was like a third of this tree at the trunk had fallen over into the backyard. And we go running around in the dark and we see it's like crushed part of the fence and it's like crushed a bunch of things on the porch, ripped the gutters off the roof, and luckily did very little damage to the house. I mean, it could easily have fallen at a different angle and just taken out a whole part of the house. And so it was kind of this blessing. And immediately my mom's going on with the stories and she was like, I talked to those people with the Bacchuses. I told them it needed to be trimmed. <laughs> and she's telling us this, you know, like very, very angrily. I'm like, yes, mom, I know you did, I know you did. And, then the phone comes out, and the phone calls begin. And now, I was there this past two weekends ago, and then I was there this weekend, this past weekend. And so, I got to witness the traditional progression of the story. And I would be sitting there doing some work preparing for my storytelling thing that I was doing, and I could hear my mom, 
and we just went out for this, and we did this, and we came back in this, and I just heard her as she added all these parts to the story. And, and some of them I couldn't even understand why she added them. Like one of them was, she added the fact that we had been away just an hour, in which case the storm had struck, and I mean, we'd be gone for like six hours. So it was a blatant lie, and I couldn't even see exactly how it added that much to the story, but it became an hour that we were gone. And then she always had the same quote about, you know, and I told them that, sure, it's too much money to trim it now, but if you don't trim it now, it's gonna cost you a lot more money, and now they see that it's costing them a lot more money, and very right I am, and da -da -da -da. So the story just blossomed, and it used to annoy the hell out of me, but now when I was listening to it, I just got this huge smile on my face because it occurred to me it's where I come from. I'm a storyteller, I'm a professional storyteller and neither of my parents are performance artists or anything like that so where did it come from? All those years and maybe even in my DNA but definitely those years of hearing my mom exaggerate and add that little touch here and drop that one annoying piece that didn't fit in so well over there and just craft this thing over telling after telling after telling into a story that just had that certain je ne sais quoi, that flair <laughs> that brings it to life in a way that not just yourself but everyone else can appreciate. I got it from my mom. And so, in honor of her, I want to end with the saying that one of my storytelling teachers used to always say at the end of his tellings, which was, I've twisted, I've bended, and now my story's ended. <laughs> Thank you.